Hello, everybody. I think we're live. Hey there. Can I get a uh, thumbs up or a uh, yes, if you guys can hear me? Hello, everybody. I recognize some of you guys. Martin Davis, amazing to see you as always. <clears throat> Tom Spath from Los Angeles. Welcome, you guys. So happy. Great. Thank you so much. Just wanted to get a confirmation. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back. So happy to hang out with you guys today. Hope you're taking um, walking slower, taking care of yourselves and others, listening, taking a little step back. Um, again, I'm honored to be with you guys here today. My name is Joseph Perlman, and I'm an acting coach, and I own Perlman Acting Academy. And I just want to extend a thank you very much to Backstage for creating this incredible series for you guys and inviting me to connect with you every week. A lot of you know that I've been uh, backstage and I, we've been collaborating for many years and all the articles are archived and can be read on backstage. So thank you again, backstage. Uh, again, my name is Joseph Perlman and it's really cool to recognize a lot of you guys that are here. I'm really excited to get into a conversation with you. I'm so excited to show you how to crush your next cold read. Uh, that's what this is about. And at my studio, we help actors launch their careers faster and reach Oscar potential on set. On set. We believe that you can launch your careers faster and with less effort when you're lit up with fun. Not only your careers, you guys, we believe you can change the world that way. Um, you can make people feel better when you are lit up with fun and positivity. And we have Zoom classes from Hollywood to anywhere in the world for beginners to celebrity actors. And you guys are all invited to watch the acting breakthroughs and transformations live from anywhere in the world. Uh, you're invited to an audit of one of our small classes uh, where we're working with celebrity series lead level actors on their booked roles, um, on currently casting major feature film and TV auditions. Some of the actors, it's fun, you recognize from your favorite shows like Game of Thrones or Last Kingdom. And you can sign up for a free audit. Just send us an email at our website, www.josephperlman.com, P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N.com. And um, follow us on Instagram to get our, all of our exciting free acting and career tips. Um, and again, it's Joseph Perlman. So how to crush the cold read. I'm, I've been so excited to speak with you guys about this for a while now. So excited to speak with you. And like I said, I'm looking forward to having a little Q&A at the end of this uh, as we go through this. So let's, let's deconstruct the cold read, what a cold read is and what a cold read isn't, because there are a lot of myths about the cold read. Some people call them mind viruses or stories of suffering. Frozen cold reads are abusive, okay? If somebody says, here's a script and just go without any preparation, that is an abusive situation. It's like telling an actor to stick their, uh, a writer to stick their pen to a page and start writing without any thought. And it does not happen in the professional world of onset, really professional acting classes or casting directors who are truly, get, truly great. Um, a cold read is this, you guys. You go in for an audition, a live video audition, a live in-person audition. Um, the team that you acted for loves your work, loved you when you walked in the room. Remember, the audition starts with an interview of who you are before you as the actor. And they said, hey, um, Anne, we would love you to read the role of Shelly. If you could take Shelly outside for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, just let us know what you need. If you could take her outside, prepare that and bring it back in, we would love that. Great, thank you. A cold read is, what can I do in 20 to 30 minutes of preparation time even though I'm not memorized, even though that script is still going to be right in front of me as I'm looking at, looking at it. So a cold read is fully prepared, even though you're not off book. And it's really important to clarify this, that frozen cold reads 
are an abusive thing that happens. And even on set, sometimes you'll get a line change. Don't confuse a cold read, uh, a structural thing with a line change or change, you know, change this phrasing. That's something you can take within some seconds. I'm talking about if you get a whole new character, you should never be forced to just do it without thinking. And sometimes in this industry, you have to speak up, stand up for yourself and gently remind someone what it means to be a professional. And one of my great clients said this when he was forced to sort of act immediately upon getting a whole new role. He said, listen, you want me to do well. I want to do well. I'm going to take this outside for a bit. And I would say 99% of the time, someone's going to react positively to it. If somebody forces you and pressures you to go on the spot and pushes you past your comfort zone, that may not be the type of people that you want to work with. You need to evaluate what you're willing to tolerate. And there's no professional situation in which an actor would have a script dropped on them and be asked to act without given a minimal allotment of prep time. Now, I'm going to show you what to do when you have that prep time in a second, but dropping a script on a performer and giving them the command go takes your power away. It's the responsibility and the duty of you, the actors, to stand up for yourselves and say, I'm going to need 15 minutes of prep time with a firm voice and a smile. The two words which I really like, pleasantly persistent. Um, gently persistent, pleasantly persistent. Uh, recently, a client described a horrible cold read experience she recently had, and she felt extremely rushed and overwhelmed. And maybe you guys can all relate and identify with this. And when I asked, how long did you take to prepare? She said, oh, they only gave me one minute. And I instantly knew this must have been like a first project production team. No major reputable casting office or production company would ever tell an actor she only had one minute to prepare previously unseen material. Thus, if people are going to treat you in that way, you need to be the one that puts them into check. And it doesn't have to be done in an irritated or annoyed way. As those kind of emotions come from fear and stress, and you're just reflecting the emotions projected at you in this instance. So asking the production team, casting director, session runner, or acting coach for the necessary amount of time, you're like kind of like a guidance counselor reminding somebody gently how to treat other people um, and essentially doing them a favor in the long run. And I think it's important to start today with that, standing up for ourselves, taking a breath, taking the time to do that. And cold reads are cool. And the other thing about a cold read, you all, is that let's say an actor that goes out for a hundred major roles a year, that actor might only see three cold reads in a year. So it's not something you should obsess over. Um, spend an entire you know semester of a class harping on. Cold reading is really simple. And I'm going to show you some really easy, fun, actionable tips to help you prepare and crush your next cold read. So here we go. We're in an audition situation, a live situation, and somebody's obviously fallen in love with you, your personality, your work, and they say, all right, um, we'd love you to take this other role outside, um, take the time that you need. And this is what's really important. You want to get all the information on this character. You don't want to ask for information you don't need, but you just want to make sure you're getting all the information that they have. So get clarity on, okay, great. Is there any, is there any information that would be useful to be on the support of a production team, on the support of a director, on the support of a casting director? And I want to emphasize, I've talked about this a bit before, rule number one of any audition scenario, don't guess what you think they are looking for. Assume you are who they're looking for, your dynamic, awesome personality, and bring yourself to the role with fun, brave, dangerous choices. So assume you are who they're looking for. Anybody, why should we not guess what they're looking for? Anybody have a, have a response? Why do we not want to guess what somebody's looking for or try to please them? 
they don't know what they're looking for. They're looking for you to be the solution to a problem. That's what they're looking for, to show them something they never thought they needed or wanted yet, that they couldn't imagine yet. Um, so get all the info on this character, then take your space. This is very important. Take your space, go out in the hall. If the hall is crowded, go outside. Find a, a space where you feel safe and comfortable. Then when you're comfortable, read the sides, but don't figure, read the sides and read the sides out loud. This is very important. This is probably one of the most important things. Find a space where you don't have to worry about looking like a asshole or a freak and you're going to read the sides out loud. This is important. If you watched the video I recently did on how to memorize faster with less effort, talking things out loud is so powerful. You can't even imagine. So find, take your space and read the sides out loud, but don't figure out what choices to make in your head. This is really important. You're never going to find the most incredible change affecting choices in your head. They have to be discovered out loud. And I'm gonna remind you of a beautiful Stella Adler quote that I've used um, and mentioned many times. She said, facts, F-A-C-T-S, facts are death to an actor until fed through imagination to become experience. So again, very important, let go of your idea of how you're gonna play her in your head until you discover it. So when I say read the script out loud, just read it out loud. See what you're saying as you're saying it out loud. <clears throat> and remember, Character description, any instructions you have. This is a big, a lot of things, act, actors don't know this. Many actors don't know this, but your character description and your stage directions were never for you to obey. They were never your acting instructions. They are not to be ignored either. Stage directions, character descriptions, they're not to be ignored, but they were never for you to obey. They were never your acting marching orders. Why is that? And that might be eye-opening for a lot of you. That character description is oftentimes written by breakdown services or casting to help casting and the actors understand the world of the piece. So they were never your acting instructions. And the stage directions, the directions on the, on the page, cries here, starts anxiously, um, smiles as she opens the door. Those are not your acting instructions. This is oftentimes part of a writer's pitch for writers to sort of help producers understand what it could look like. Um, so th this is really, really important. And it's gonna lead a lot of actors to what we call the obvious choice, the cliche, doing the thing that everybody else is gonna do. So don't solve the problem in your head, read the piece out loud, F find a place, again, most important, where you're not afraid to talk out loud. Listen, I don't, think I have to say this, and I think a lot of you know this, that your words are so powerful. Words have so much power in emotional words. Words that are spoken with emotion are capable of creating new realities, changing the world, hurting people, um, making people fall in love with you. Words have such power. Spoken words, not the thoughts, but the words you speak. So find a place where you're not afraid to talk out loud. And all of the questions I'm gonna guide you through are meant to be talked out loud. Your words become your reality in life and especially in acting in your emotional words um, and the present moment are dimensions more powerful than we can ever imagine. And I'll say something too, we'll double down on this. Your winning choices, your to guarantee a win, your great choices, and it's possible to guarantee a win every time you walk in a room or put an audition on tape or get on set. Your great choices are a result of your out loud verbal discovery. And I'm going to say that again. We can use our words to change the world. We can use our words to get to the place to teleport to where we want to in our career. Great choices in acting are a result of your out loud verbal discovery. And I want you to answer all of these other questions out loud. One, ask yourself, what is the style of this piece? Okay, 
What world is this? Do we know anything about the writer? Is this something that I've seen? How do people behave? Um, is it film or television? Is it single camera? Is it a hybrid? Is it multi-camera? Is it um, virtual reality? Is it Disney, Nickelodeon, HBO, uh, broadcast network? There's so many different styles. We talk about that. It's important to say what style it is before you start working um, in the classes that I teach. Be specific because this is a question that's asking you, how crazy can I go inside this structure? You're really asking, how much room is there for fun? How big is the structure? Is it really big like multi-camera, which is closer in style to theater, which is more bigger, faster, louder, funnier, lifted jokes, grounded emotions, or is it more grounded like a single camera or a gritty uh, cable drama? This is very important because we want to establish the structure that we get to go crazy inside. So it's okay if you don't know it, you can have a sense, you can make some, make some choices. It's if you don't know it, um, read the script out loud and use your actor intuition and simply ask, is it comedy? Is it drama? Is it double spaced? Which is a signifier that it could be multi-camera, which in case that case it's closer to bigger, faster, louder, funnier, or is it single spaced comedy? which might be more single camera, or does it feel more dramatic? Very important first question to ask. Next question is, what is the trap? What is the obvious choice, the cliche choice? What is every actor gonna do to try to please the casting director, to try to not stand out? Um, what is every actor gonna do to obey, to obey the stage directions, obey the character descriptions? Marlon Brando, had a really beautiful quote. He said, actors find a way to do it that's never been done before. I, I talk about it every video, every article, the actors that win the role, the actors that get the chemistry, read, get the callback are the ones that had the bravery to do the thing that everybody else was too afraid of, to out danger the other actors. The, the video I recently did on um, how to make dangerous acting choices. That's what this is about. So what is the trap? And, and one of the fun ways to find that, you guys, a practicable way to find it is ask yourself, what is the text doing that doesn't need my help to do? What is it doing without me? Does that make sense? Um, really, really important. What is the text doing that doesn't need my help? Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's so super important to, to think about that. How do I not want to do it? Helen Hunt works like this. Whether you book the role or it's an audition, it's like, let's clear the table of all the stuff I don't want to do. What do I not want to do? So I have the space for the things that might be um, discovered and might be new. Yes. And next, I want you to talk out loud. I want you to start talking out loud as him or her. Uh, we do this uh, every day in our classes where we start talking as that character. Um, I am one who does this. Uh, I am one who does that. Um, start just talking out loud and don't talk about the scene. I want to know um, who you are outside of the scene. So your words start to become your reality. You just start talking out loud. Um, you know, what's a typical day like? Uh, just start talking out loud as that person. It starts, what we're trying to do is to tune your heartbeat to her heartbeat, her heartbeat to your heartbeat. It's almost like the start of flying hours. And the moment you start talking as her or him, you are doing the character perfectly. So what we're doing, as Stella Adler said, is we're triggering the we're triggering the event where we're bringing her through imagination and becoming experienced. So talk her out loud and go anywhere you want. With that, next question you're going to ask you're going to ask is, what is my bare bones relationship to every person in that scene? And be very specific. My partner. Maybe there's some other people. Maybe there's some hidden relationships. You need to ask yourself, in life, we know, like, I have two sisters. Uh, one is younger, another is younger than that. I'm the older brother. We know who everybody is to us. Mother, father, brother, lover, sister, dog. You need to be very specific about who these people are, how long you've known them. And not, you know, you don't want to say he's my friend, okay? Um, the specific answer is he's my best friend since childhood. In fact, we grew up in the same house when his parents were going through a divorce. That's specific, and I've known him for 15 years. Next question talked out loud is, what is my emotional relationship? 
what's your feeling for everyone in that scene specifically? And again, in life, this is not acting work, you guys. This is like, in life, we have a specific feeling for everybody we've ever met and we don't have to think about it. Even if we just met them, we have a gut emotional hit on them and be very specific and talk it out loud and know that the people you're talking about can't hear what you're feeling. So these are inner feelings out loud. What's your emotional relationship to everyone in the scene? What's your specific emotional feeling for them? Not, I like her. I like her as general. Get a thesaurus. It's very important that as you're starting this process of being an actor, you have access, easy access to a thesaurus, either an app or, or the book. But apps are so handy uh, when you don't have a book. Never, and, and yeah, and so not, I like her. Um, she's the love of my life and I can't live without her is what you're looking for. Um, or, or, or you, you know what I'm saying? Like you wanna be very, very, very specific. Um, he amuses me, like, or he terrifies me, um, but I'm in awe of her, I'm in awe of him. Something like that, very specific. Next, this is, this is really important. This is how we, I always tell the actors that, and I'm telling you guys, it's important in an audition, you deliver the on-set version, not the audition version. Deliver the on-set version of the scene, not the audition version where you're on a mark and you know standing or sitting behind this sort of imaginary piece of plexiglass where you don't wanna to get to, no, you wanna to fight to get in the scene the way you would be on set. And that means gently asking, fighting to try to get in the, in the proximity to your partner the way you'd be on set, not to be set back. And all you have to do is ask or lean into the piece if there is a mark that you need to stand on. Next, um, yeah, context. This is super important. To deliver the on-set version is how do you see the scene? Paint the picture. Talk to somebody's, uh, some imaginary person as you're sitting outside working through your cold read. Talk to the eyes of somebody, not their ears or their intellect. Paint the picture of how you see everything in that scene. Never just, yeah, um, I, I, I see the bed there or I see the kitchen there or I see the door there. This is something that comes up. This whole eyeline conversation is shutting a generation of actors down. Um, never treat people like eyelines. Eyelines is just, it's about being up and out. You know, if, if the camera that I'm talking to you on is right there and I'm talking to Jane over there, I don't wanna be here, I don't wanna be here. I just simply wanna be up and out having that conversation with Jane. And it's very important that you see people Place furniture, but see people. Because if you just place people in a scene, um, you're gonna treat them like furniture. You want to see people. And this is an important point. You don't wanna lump all the people you're talking to in as your reader. The person you're reading with is going to be the primary person you're speaking with. And you're gonna be very clear about where you see the other people uh, everywhere in the scene. I use this really fun example, the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs example. It's kind of silly and I'll, and I'll show you guys how it works. So I'm looking at you through the camera right now, but I'm gonna put my reader here, which is Snow White. Hey, Snow White, good to see you, how you doing? So I'm talking to Snow White in this scene and I'm having a lovely conversation with Snow White. How are the woods? Are you staying safe? And then all of a sudden, one of the dwarves starts to speak up. Um, Sleepy, if you could keep it down, I'm, I'm having a conversation with Snow White right now, okay? Thank you. Back to Snow White, hey Snow White, and I'm talking to my reader, and then let's say Dopey. Uh, Dopey, hold on a second. Uh, Dopey, we'll get there. Great, and then back to Snow White. So be very clear about where you see people. And let's say one of the other, uh, seven, one of the other characters sort of hijacks the conversation, and I'm talking to one of the other characters, then my reader is going to be that other character. Then I can have a suspended conversation with Sneezy for the rest of the piece. So be very specific about where you see people and be very clear about where you're seeing and placing all the other things in the scene. Don't treat people like eye lines. This is really important. Um, yeah, never place people there like furniture. Um, the higher art is always to ask yourself, like any great artist, what great artists like you guys all ask yourselves and great painters and musicians is how do I see it? That's the process of discovery. Um, how do I see it? And talk it out loud. Now ask yourself, what's the prior moment of most emotional significance? 
I'm going to be, I'm talking about some terms, but we're elevating the art of them. Sometimes you hear, what's my prior moment? And that fundamentally might not matter. Like I, I went to the bathroom or I brushed my teeth or I walked to my dog. No, what's the prior moment of most emotional significance? Not just what you were doing before. What are you emotionally buzzing with? What happened that is like emotionally impacting you before you come into the scene and talk it out loud. The next question, good, I'm so, and Martin Davis, I can't tell you how beautiful it is to always see you here. Thank you so much. And, and although some of it may review, be review, I'm hoping some of it will uh, also be new as well. And thank you for being here. Yeah, the, so it's like prior moment of most emotional significance. Sometimes in craft, we talk about it as emotional preparation. And I think a lot of actors make the mistake of riding into the scene on their emotional preparation. And we all know that we think of acting like this in life. It's acting's like this. We, something happens to us before we walk in a room and play a scene or in life, something happens, we fall in love. We got, we were broken up with and we have this intense emotion. And I think of it as like this ember that we stoke with a bellows. And, and if you all know what a bellows is, it blows air to that ember. And what happens to an ember when it's lit and we blow it with a bellows? It, it becomes red, it starts to glow. And think of that ember of emotion as something that we stoke right in the seconds before we come in so that when we walk in the room, we can throw the bellows away, ball up our training preparation, chuck that away and simply walk in and not have to do anything. Live off the interest, blank canvas. I don't know what she's gonna do. She doesn't know what I'm going to do moment by moment, talking and listening. So prior moment of most emotional significance. And then we're going to ask now, not is what one of the final things we can ask is not what's my intention, what's my objective. It's a higher art form of intention and objective. In life, we don't always want to just get something from someone. We don't always have these acha actions, these things we're doing to people. Intention and objective raised to a higher level is action in the moment. And I'll give you an example of this. Action in the moment at the start of the piece. And we'll use sort of a basic intention objective. An intention objective is typically a verb. It's something that's capable of being done. It has its test in your partner. It's something that is no harder than open the water bo bottle cap, drink, close the water bottle cap, okay? It has to be very doable. and. We'll use an intention um, because I think it's something we all need these days. Let's say you identify that intention, action in the moment as to amuse. I want to show you how an action intention is multidimensional and not just something I want to do to somebody. So here's the example. You could have an intention to, to punish or to, um, to amuse. I'm going to use to amuse. Everything I do amuses the person I'm talking to, uh, Shelly. I'm going to amuse Shelly actively, consciously, every time I, you know, every time I speak, it's all in service to amusing her, you know, trying to do silly things to get her to laugh. Um, or I am amused by her. Everything she does amuses me. I am amused by her. See how that's different? I am amused by her. She doesn't have to do anything, but it's just like hysterical what she's doing. Or I have the need to amuse her. I don't know how I'm going to do it but I'm filled with the need to amuse her. So it's more of an internal um, thing, the need to amuse, or I can have the need to be amused. And I think we all have the need to be amused, um, hopefully, uh, maybe. I have the need to be amused. So, so to amuse, amused by, the need to amuse or the need to be amused. Actions are so much more complex than the typical sort of classroom, what's my intention, what's my objective? I wanna share that with you guys because you have so many more tools um, uh, to use here. So what is that intention? What is that objective action in the moment? Shakespeare in his advice, the first mention of action, intention, objective came from Shakespeare in Hamlet in his, in his advice to the players. Um, Shakespeare through Hamlet told the, the company of actors sort of gave them the best instruction ever on acting. And one of the things that he said, Hamlet, Shakespeare, talking <laughs> through Hamlet to actors is, suit the action to the word, the word to the action. 
with this special observance that it o'erstep not the modesty of nature. Suit the action to the word, the word to the action. Why do we want to have action? Um, why do we want to connect action to the words? As I believe Hitchcock said, what we're doing here, everybody, this is everyday life with all the boring parts cut out. It's whole lives lived out in a half an hour, in an hour, in a series, in a three, in a three hour play. So it moves, there's some movement to it. Um, suit the action to the word, the word to the action. So that, that's where this whole intention objective thing comes from. And I think the elevation of it is action in the moment. It's multidimensional. Uh, you can use the same example with, um, let's say to, to scold, you can scold somebody, you can be scolded by them. I didn't do anything wrong. Or you can have the need to scold or you can have the need to be scolded. It's just another example of the sort of multi-dimensional levels of intention, action, objective that you can use. And now is the time, you've talked all this out loud, now is the time, because you've talked it out loud, it's planted seeds, it's taken root inside of you, the strong stuff has, and now it's time to throw out your training, to ball it up, to chuck it out the window, to drop it and let it go, as Meryl Streep talks about. This is really important. We don't want to bring any of the preparation into the room, all right? We don't want our acting to reek like acting training. Um, very important to drop it and let it go. And I'm going to say, too, is the difference between good and great is your ability to start every scene emotionally lit up instead of empty, like that ember I was talking about stoking with that bellows. The difference between good and great acting is your ability to start every scene emotionally lit up instead of empty. And in an audition, it's to stand out without screaming. Um, it's not okay to play it safe. Um, here's the, the note we, we get from casting a lot in production. Joseph, I can always pull an actor back to the cliche choice, to talking and listening to something simple, but I can never pull that brave choice out. And I, I, I'm gonna say it again, it's your ability to make these brave, beautiful, fun, dangerous choices that is directly related to you getting those roles and igniting your career. And now, what do we do after all the work is done? It is what I call finding the hook. What is the thing? It is your deeply emotional attitude at the top of the scene. What is a great choice? It is an emotional attitude that is ignited in seconds. It's what we do in our classes. It's why I want you guys to come watch it. It's how we activate a full emotional preparation in one second on the tip of our fingers. After we have the last question of intention, objective, action in the moment um, is where we kick the training away and acknowledge that all the work is in me and to say to yourselves, okay, if it were me under the influence of that relationship in this situation with that uh, incredible, beautiful friend and with, 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 these, um, with this kingdom, what would I do at the start of the scene? What would I say? Oh, I would say this, bam. And what comes out of your mouth is what I call the hook, is what I call that, it's like, think of it as a ramp into the scene, as a trigger. We are finding the language that activates a full emotional light up at the start of the scene. And think of it as a deeply emotional, improvisational body attitude. And I'll give you an example of it in life. Think of those of you that drive or just a pedestrian, somebody really aggressively, dangerously cuts you off in a car, in person. And there might be a red surge that comes up your crotch, up your stomach, up your chest. And inside of yourself, you're saying, what the F, you know, but you didn't say it out loud. And then the, you might, the person might look at you and you might say, having a great day, <laughs> everything okay. But what you really mean is that hook. It's that body attitude. It's not acting technique. It is in life. Remember what we say and what we mean are these separate events most of the time. And it's your import, it's your job not to emotionalize the text. Um, a lot of actors will think that, a lot of people in general think that to do justice to the writing, you have to make emotional choices based on what the text is suggesting, ignoring that we don't do that in life. And Martin Landau so beautifully said, is that in a well-written script, what people say to each other, the words, it's only what people are willing to reveal, willing to share. 
The 90% he or she isn't willing to share is what we do for a living. This is really important. And we can go back. If you um, see the, the video on dangerous acting I did a couple of weeks ago, I talk more about it. And so once that light up um, is there, it's yours to then in one second, uh, activate that, put that in your body. Um, you don't have to say it out loud. It's this, it's this instant body attitude. And then you go into the scene and that's your, you know, that's your choice. It, it's so important to have that emotional choice, that take, that way in at the beginning of the scene. The beginning is everything. Because if you don't start lit up, it's really hard to warm up into it. And the other thing too is, I just want you to leave, I want you to leave today. I want you to leave to feel really great. And I want you to leave also knowing that your words are powerful and we can use our words um, in beautiful ways, not just in acting, the things we speak out loud to other people. Uh, to other groups, uh, especially black people and people of color and people who are suffering right now, the words that we speak that are emotional, um, they have impact. They have, they have an impact, whether you know it or whether you don't know it. And it's really important that you are um, thoughtful with your words, that you are intentional with your words and that you use your words and you don't weaponize your words, okay? Words are so powerful, I can't even, you know, no words can do that justice. So I, I want you to leave sort of having a, a respect for the power of the things that you say, the words that you say. I want to use my words to help you guys pra find pra practic, you know, how to actually give you actionable advice to help you absolutely crush your next cold read. But I want, also want to help you use your words to make you feel better. I want to help. I want to make you guys feel better with my words as well, too. So the out loud talking is really, really important. And, and the other thing, too, is standing up for yourselves, changing the narrative about, you know, when somebody tells you oftentimes frozen cold reads are done in classes just to waste a class, just to sort of stretch it all out. Um, if it's possible for an actor to have a transformation every time they get up and work, why are we not having one every single time we get up and work? And I invite you guys to be a part of that work during the week um, and watch the actors have these undeniable breakthroughs and transformations every single time they get up and work. If it's possible, let's all do it um, together. And, and after that hook, after that light up, after we walk into a scene emotionally lit up and emotionally full, what do we do? It's blank canvas time, nothing. And it's not gonna feel any harder than as if you were playing yourself. I think a lot of actors expect every moment to feel, it's a horrible image, like birthing a calf. Um, and they're terrified when it feels effortless and easy. And remember, your best acting should feel easy and effortless. And you need to trust that there's nothing that you need to be pushing or shoving. After all the work is over, it's easy, is what I'm saying to you all. You don't have to know what she's going to do when you walk in the room. And she has no clue what you've got up your sleeve. Moment by moment, talking and listening, daring uh, and trusting that your preparation was powerful, that your parachute of preparation was powerful. One of my favorite actors who I really miss is Philip Seymour Hoffman. You guys remember Philip Seymour Hoffman? And do you, do you also like him as well, too? He was really one of my favorites. And he, he said... Um, he was asked in Movie Maker Magazine in 2000, and I can't remember, uh, Movie Maker Magazine some years ago, what roles did you play that you most related to or most connected to? And he said, all of the roles I played, I related and identified to. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're that. It just means we are capable of infinite connection, infinite relationships. There are beautiful things in all of us, monstrous things in all of us. And it's our ability to connect and relate and identify um, that provides that creates a catharsis it doesn't cause complexes there's it's a it's a healthy thing to explore in the work that we do and he said that after all the work that I did which is very similar to a lot of what I laid out for you guys there's about 99 questions that I'll ask an actor that will ask an actor in preparation for a book role or an audition I'm giving you some really really practicable awesome tools for what do you do in sort of 15, 20, 30 minutes of prep time to come in and crush your cold read. Um, but it's, yeah, he said, 
He said, after all the hard work was over, I didn't really do anything. I didn't alter myself, change myself. I trusted that that medicine was in my body. And I just, you know, lived moment by moment. But that work, you better believe it, was actually there. And I think of great, you know, the words we say, planting seeds in our body. I think of it like Olympic training. Um, Olympic training where it goes into your muscle memory over the course of years and months and weeks. And the time comes to, you know, do the race. Um, no training is to be found. It's all in your muscle memory. It has to be let go of. And I also use the example of taking a medication. When you go somewhere where malaria is present, we take a medication to prevent from getting malaria. And I say to the actors I work with, when you get off the plane in a malaria um, zone, what do you do? What do you need to do to keep from getting malaria? It's a trick question. Nothing. Because when the strong medicine is in you, you don't have to do anything. So again, permission to then really be yourselves after that work is in you. And one of the wonderful, my friends, Alex Ashinger, who's one of our terrific coaches at the studio said, um, stop controlling what other people see. Stop trying to control what other people see. You can't control what other people see. Um, so talking out loud, your words are powerful. Stand up for yourselves. Don't get pushed into doing something. Um, gently, pleasantly, persistently remind somebody what it means to be a professional. And frozen cold reads are abusive and it's not something that's done professionally. Um, so I, I, I leave you with that. I so welcome you to come if you haven't to attend a free audit uh, via Zoom from anywhere in the world in one of our amazing classes during the week where you're gonna watch actors uh, preparing currently casting and production is now coming back slowly. So currently casting major film and TV audition material, booked roles. Um, sometimes they're working on, we'll work with actors on how they're actually walking into the room before they start acting. Or how do you walk into an agent manager meeting? Or how are you walking into a general meeting with production or casting to be instantly memorable, to be instantly, um, somebody can't ignore who you are when you walk in the room. We're working on all elements of performance. Sometimes an actor will bring in their comedy set or musical set and we'll work on the performance element of it. Um, yeah, I, I, I could you know go on and on and on about a lot of these things, but I really wanted to give you a set of sharp, actionable tools with which to work on, um, with which to you know really nail your cold read when you don't have a lot of time. So again, remember cold read, is fully prepared even though you're not off book. And it's important when you go in there, um, technically don't have your script, you know, don't have your script to the side. The one place your script should be is you should be holding your script with one, hands, uh, one hand. And when talking, talk, when listening, listen, and in the in-between moments, scoop the lines off with your eyes. And look what happens if your script is anywhere off to the side. Now we have the benefit of, of working on camera. You guys are experiencing this on camera. So you're the producers and casting watching me work right now. If I need a line and my script is anywhere but here, look what happens. See, my head tilts or if it's on my lap, it's going down, down. Or So the only place the script should be in a cold read is with one hand on the script. And why do we have one hand on the script and not two hands? Anybody know? Why do we do one hand and not two hands on the script? We have one hand on the script so we can be as physical as we are in life. It's a big mistake to think that we should be physically shut down and only projecting through our eyes. No, we want one hand on the script so we can be as physical as we would be in life. And the only place the script should be is right in front of you. I always liken it to Dylan's harmonica, Bob Dylan's harmonica, how it comes up when he plays it and then it kind of goes down, comes up, goes down. So the script should be right in front. And look at this, I'm on camera and I don't think you're seeing my script right now. But if I need a line, look at my eyes. See, it's just a simple scoop up. So that's just technically how to handle a cold read. You don't need a whole class on it. You don't need a semester of classes on it. A cold read is a version of scene study with some different rules. So thank you, thank you, thank you for um, you know being generous with your time, everyone, and, and being here and watching this. And those of you that are watching the replay, thank you for watching the replay. And um, Backstage, thank you again for um, for giving us this uh, platform to connect with these amazing artists all over the world. Thank you. And I want to ask a go to a couple questions here. 
Um, oh, you're so welcome, Martin. Man, Martin, you keep popping up every time I look over. Martin Davis, any any questions? I'll take a few questions before we um, before we stop for the day. And I can't wait to see you all in uh, the studio at a, at a free audit one of these days. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, all I care is that this is, you know, it, it is practicable. It is useful. If something isn't useful, what's the point, you know? Um, the best way to contact us is through our website, is www.josephperlman, J-O-S-E-P-H, Perlman, P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N.com. Go to the contact section, uh, section. just hit us up with an email, um, and we'll, we'll set you up with a free audit in one of our fun classes during the week, including Masterclass, where we have really exciting celebrity series lead level actors getting a workout, uh, undeniable breakthrough on currently casting and their actual projects that they're they're shooting now for various streaming platforms and broadcast uh, network. Uh, let's see. Oh, you guys are so welcome. And yeah, yeah, really the, 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 the hook work that I do is one of the most exciting things. Remember, it's a great question that you asked about the hook. Uh, Bianca Comiso, thank you, is remember you never solve the problem of how to play her in your head, okay? Don't solve the problem of how to play the scene, how to play who you're playing. In your head, it has to be discovered out loud. Out loud is the key to all of this, talking things out loud. Try it on your own. See how powerful your words are. You may not have something happen in the moment, but there will be a return on that energy you put out with your words. And you better believe it. And we see it, and we see it now. Uh, all together, we see it now with what's happening in the world. And... Yeah, and the hook is so beautiful because the hook is the moment when all your preparation and training get kicked, gets kicked away. Think of your preparation as scaffolding, everybody. Um, scaffolding, you don't, you don't keep the scaffolding on. You kick it away when it's done. It's just used as an armature. It's used to get the building up. And the hook is instant access to full emotional preparation. Remember, the difference between good and great, starting every scene emotionally full instead of empty. The hook is how you instantly light yourself up. And, and the hook is the thing that makes it so you don't have to act. That's what the best description of a hook is. It's oftentimes like um, a, just a short little bit of words. It's a body attitude. It's, it's the thing that lights you up in one second. A lot of the work I do is on set with actors, pre-shooting. And you don't have time to be doing your work. And you don't have time to delay a set. You need to instantly light up to an emotional preparation in one second. And the hook is how I help the actors light that up. It is instant access to full emotional preparation. It's the thing that makes it so you don't have to act. Um, so you can set yourself free. And you think of it as an emotional attitude, an emotional body attitude. And it's fun. And it outfunds and it, out, it sort of outfunds nerves. Um, and it's really a blast. And come and watch the hooks emerge but you can never find what that hook is without going through the work. So you have to go through the work, you know, you have to go through the work out loud and it's this beautiful discovery. And I always describe the moment when the actors find these beautiful hooks is, it's like in the movie Inception, if you guys ever saw that beautiful Christopher Nolan movie Inception where the actors go into this sort of, um, they, go into the, they, they go into this sort of dream world for lack of a better way to describe it altered consciousness. And the way they fall out is they get this kick. It's almost like a, a controlled accident where the chair tips back over. And, and that's, that's how a hook is found. It's never going to be found in your head. You can't think what my hook is. The hook is the thing that pops out once you've planted all those beautiful emotional seeds. And um, it's so satisfying and powerful um, when that does pop out. So yeah, um, really, really, really fun hanging with you guys. I can't wait to do it next week. And um, as always, yeah, as always, take great care of yourselves, be well. And um, I look forward to working with you guys again very, very soon. Um, some of the questions you're asking are so wonderful, like how do you make a good reel and launch your career? And, and I've done videos on that. There's um, a video I've done specifically on how to create an inc the incredible new version of a reel with less effort. And so watch the videos on backstage, the different videos, because they address some of these topics. And um, it's also fun to get a sense of, you know, maybe there's something you guys want to hear about in a future video. Is there something that um, you would like to hear about in an upcoming video? Feel free to put it in the comment section and I can look at it now or later. Um, 
<laughs> my scaffolding will come down soon. Yeah, you know, preparation is a means to an end. You know, your technique or your preparation, and you talk to all the greats, your technique and preparation has no business in the actual final performance. It is the Olympic training. It is the thing that is thrown out and discarded. Meryl Streep said it best. Drop it and let it go. Choosing a monologue, Leora. That's a good one. Um, Fun with wool is your name. Can we uh, talk about how to get started when you're young? Um, someone's asking, how tall, how tall am I? That is uh, bizarre, but I'll, I'll answer it. I'm about 6'2", 6'3", depending on the day, I guess. Um, anyway, I love you guys. Stay weird and, and crazy and take really good care of each other. Um, just take the best care of each other and take the best care of yourselves. Um, yeah, be well. Thank you guys very, very much. Thank you.